You are listening to the Unleash Greatness Podcast with your host, Jonathan Mitchell. The best in personal, emotional, spiritual, and business development. Hello, everyone. This is Jonathan Mitchell. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today is Wednesday, so we do a book review. Uh, I have chosen the book called The Sunflower by Simon Weissenthal. An amazing book about uh, forgiveness, the dichotomy between who gives it, who receives it, how you can benefit from it, or if you should even partake in it at all. It's an interesting book that has arguments on both sides. Today's podcast is brought to you by and sponsored by Natural Medicine Mamas, whose vision it is to help families stay and be healthy using natural methods for the body, mind, and soul. They focus on delivering products and education surrounding with herbs and other natural medicines to help you and your family be healthy. Uh, If you want to know more, please go to naturalmedicinemamas.com to learn about their Herb of the Month Club. Also, just want to have a quick reminder to you to go to the website, unleashg.com, and grab your free gift from myself, which is a custom meditation around moving through any negative emotions, which I hope you find useful. Um, Also, would love to have you rate, subscribe, review, share this podcast if you feel like it serves you. Now, let's get going, and thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you guys again for listening in. So today's book review, I wanted to stay on the topic of forgiveness since we had an amazing guest on Monday with Dr. Shonda Perrin with her own nonprofit, Project Forgive, and her ability to bring the mass conversation of forgiveness to the world is amazing. If you haven't listened to it yet, go back there because she gives some incredible insights and her own vulnerable story around forgiveness and how we can employ it in our own lives. So this book, The Sunflower by Simon Weisenthal, I chose because it gives a different perspective on forgiveness. The argument inside is the whole philosophical dichotomy of whether or not we should give forgiveness. The reason why I brought up this book, because it gives the arguments on both sides on when forgiveness should be given or when it should not be given. Are there acts or are there circumstances or situations or people that are too much or too far to give forgiveness to or even be asked for forgiveness? Simon himself was a Jew in 1943 in a Polish German occupied concentration camp called Limburg. And he talks about his own experience of literally not knowing from one day to the next if he's going to die or get shot or be tortured or have something happen to him or his friends or his family and just all the things that they went through. He then had a specific experience where he was asked to go work at the hospital of German soldiers who were wounded and to go help to their needs. When he got there, a nurse asked him to go talk to a specific German soldier who was on his deathbed who wanted to talk to a Jew. He then found himself talking to a man named Carl Seidel, who was fatally wounded just shortly before that. And Carl went into detail talking to Simon about all the things that he had been through, his life, his upbringing as a Catholic, how he got caught up in the excitement of Nazi Germany, amazing power of Hitler and his ability to bring in the youth, which was called the Hitler Youth, and then how he became later an SS soldier. Carl then talked about several events he felt guilty about, one of which was in Russia, where he and his fellow soldiers were ordered to gather 300 Jews, mostly women, children, and the elderly, locked them up in a building, burned the building to the ground, and then shot anybody who tried to escape. After that event, Carl was shortly injured, fatally, and then brought to that hospital where he wanted to have forgiveness from a Jew. Now, this is when Simon had the philosophical question, am I the person to give this forgiveness? Should I give him forgiveness or not for what he's asking for? Justice and forgiveness are a fine balance of which it's hard to know when both should be employed or not. So after Carl finished the story, Simon decided to leave the soldier without granting actual forgiveness. What he did give was empathy and understanding to him but despite being having anger coming up and, and being repulsed by the atrocities that Carl had talked about, he did stay there with him and held his hand and listened to his confession. And he just gave a simple human respect to this man he went through his own experience and took himself out of it for just a moment. When Simon returned to the concentration camp and told his friends and family and inmates and anyone else who was there what had happened to the Nazi soldier and what he went through, and also told him that he did not give forgiveness. He asked, was that the right thing to do? 
One friend said that he would have committed a huge offense against God by granting him forgiveness. Another with a Christian background said, no, anybody who asks forgiveness should be given it. One thing he did mention was that Carl tried to offer up anything he owned to Simon as, um, as a recompense from what he did wrong. He did also give him his mom's address of where he lived and gave him a letter to his mom that he had given that he asked Simon to deliver. So when the war was over, Simon went to find his mom, gave, him, gave her the letter, and then listened to the mom mourn over her sons, Carl, and her husband that she both lost in the war. As Simon listened, she described Carl as a nice, kind Christian boy that had done nothing wrong against the Jews. Now, Simon then had, had the choice of whether or not he should tell the mom of all the things that he did wrong, all the things that her son did against the Jews, but instead he chose to keep it to himself and not to tell her or destroy the image she had in her mind of her boy that she thought had done nothing wrong against anyone. So if you've ever been asked for forgiveness, this is the question that Simon brings up. What do you take into your mind whether or not you should give someone forgiveness or not, whether it's something small or major, when is the point where you say, no, this is unforgivable, or yes, you'll be forgiven of this? Just regretting a wrongdoing to some people is not enough. Now, in the Jewish tradition, the act of murder is unforgivable because you have to be able to ask for the victim for forgiveness in order to be forgiven by God, by Jewish tradition. And again, if someone's murdered, you can't ask them for forgiveness. So therefore, you're unable to be forgiven because they're gone and that God won't forgive you either. The other side of it that Simon talked about was that he learned that Nazi soldiers who had refused to kill Jews went unpunished. So ultimately, Karl did not have to kill Jews and he could have stopped murdering them if he wanted to. And even he said that even on his deathbed, he was fill, filled with remorse and regret but he didn't feel like that Carl saw Jews as a person or an individual. Something that um, one of the writers pointed out to um, Simon when he went through this conversation in his head to this other writer, which is talking about, should I have forgiven him or should I have not have? This other man called Primo Levi said that Carl never asked Simon about himself. He never asked him about his personal suffering. He never asked him about his background. Therefore, he dehumanized Simon as a person, when he asked for someone to confess to, he said, any Jew, I don't care who it is, just give me a Jew. He never asked about him, never asked about his background, what he went through. He just wanted to confess so he wasn't feeling guilty anymore. And part of the problem with Nazi Germany was the whole dehumanizing of Jews in the first place, which gave the Germans and the Nazis permission in their mind to kill all of these Jews because in their minds they were less than human. So what Primo was pointing out was that because Carl never asked about Simon individually or what he went through, he was dehumanizing him even in asking for forgiveness. Another note that Primo also pointed out to Simon was that Carl on his deathbed never said if he would have survived or would have continued living if he would have stopped killing Jews or he would have changed his behavior or not. So the question is, should a man be given forgiveness who's not willing to show he's going to change his ways or not? We're all told that, you know, when you say you're sorry, it means that you're not going to do that action again, right? So why should a man be given forgiveness who's not willing to say that what he did was wrong and he's willing to change his ways? That's the question that he was asking. So now that we've heard the arguments against forgiveness, now there are arguments for forgiveness. What what Simon explored was other people's stories on whether or not forgiveness should be had. One of the people that he points out around forgiveness is the Dalai Lama and how he shared an example in his own life. When he shares, the Dalai Lama shares a story about this monk who served 18 years in a Chinese prison and was asked to name the biggest threat or danger he faced while he was in, in prison. Amazingly enough, the monk's answer was that he was most fearful of losing his compassion for the Chinese. Another story he pointed out was from a nun of Native American descent who talked about her own desire for revenge after she th saw the genocides of the Native American people. And this nun's mother came to her and said, Do not be so ignorant and stupid and inhuman as they are. 
you must learn the wisdom of how to let go of the poison. Simon points out ultimately that forgiveness doesn't just benefit the guilty who are asking for forgiveness. It also relieves the person being asked to forgive. He points out that holding on to resentment, anger, and hatred only leads to people being emotionally trapped. Here are some of the key things I want to make sure I pointed out. Forgiveness is not an easy is not an easy thing to go through. It's a complex, different thing for every person who goes through it, no matter what you have. Simon learned there's no easy answers to any of these conclusions or any of these questions. But by being willing to ask questions and by willing to be open for what is right or wrong is what can lead you to ultimately the correct answer. By not being governed by anger or hatred. Ultimately, if you let those emotions govern your life is what will rule you, is what he points out in the book. One last thought for you as well is that Simon also points out that just because forgiveness is given to someone else, or if you do decide to give forgiveness, it does not condone the wrongful act. It does not say you should forget that act as well. It just means that you're letting go of the inner emotions that are keeping you hostage. Another book that points out this thing very well is Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl, which you haven't read it. It's also an amazing book, which I'll probably do a review on that as well. But what he points out is the same thing, is ultimately our choice, whether or not we're willing to give forgiveness, and if we're going to stay in our own prison of hatred and anger and remorse and revenge type feelings for the rest of our lives, or if we're going to let go and use those experiences for our benefit and strength as opposed to holding us back. What I will go over on Friday during Spiel Day is just what I take my own clients through when forgiveness comes up, whether that means they need to ask for forgiveness or whether they need to give forgiveness because something was done wrong to them. I hope that this book and this book review has given you your own questions to ask whether or not you should be asking for forgiveness or if you should be giving forgiveness to someone else, whether or not someone changes, if that determines whether you give them forgiveness, or if you should hold on to whatever things you have until someone's willing to change. Those are some powerful questions to ask. Ultimately, what I believe is what we'll cover on Friday, which I hope you'll tune into. I'll give you some experiences that I've had when working with rape victims in Chicago to some at-risk youth in uh, southern Utah to all over the place, just different circumstances and how to let go of things that you may be holding on to. Thank you so much for listening in. Again, share this, rate, review. would love to hear your thoughts. Reach out to me. I'd love to hear from you as well. If you have any good books on any topic, please tell me. I'd love to do a review on it. And uh, thank you again. This is Unleash Greatness. Talk soon. Mm-hmm.